Welcome. My name is Jesse and you are listening to The Wake Up Call. This show is about opening your eyes to how you've been living, bringing awareness to the standard you've been operating at, and helping you start living to your full potential. There are two ways I'll help you do this. One, by disciplining your mind, and two, by strengthening your body. It's time to take stock of your current performance and go to the next level. Let's do this. Guys, welcome back to a fresh episode of The Wake Up Call. This is episode 161. Today, we're going to be talking about progress, how to make it, how much is a good amount, and why you should consider reflecting and celebrating small progress. Everybody wants to make these huge gains, these have the overnight success, going from zero to 100 kilo bench press, you know, being able to run a four minute or a five minute kilometer, all of these things, you know, getting down to single digit body fat percentage. These big markers, landmarks, milestones, while they are great to look at and see and have as targets and things to aspire to, understand that they may not always happen in such dramatic fashion. You know, so if you see a guy or girl make this amazing four week transformation where they went from, you know, fat to lean, unfit to super fit, you know, weak to extremely strong, ask yourself the question is that something that they can maintain? Is that ridiculously acute? So, it, very short term progress. Is it sustainable? And is it something they can repeat again or is it a one off? So if you ever feel like, you know, you're not making fast progress, if you ever get bummed about not making progress in the gym, or you feel like you're working really, really hard, but you're, you know, only getting a small return on your efforts, understand this. Any progress is good progress. Oh, you only added an extra five kilos to your bench press over the course of six months. Man, that sucks. What the fuck's wrong with you? Oh, you only lost two kilos this month. That's terrible. You should feel ashamed of that. You know, for losing two kilos that you had in excess just one month ago. What the fuck? You only increased the total load of your double kettlebell front squat by 840 kilos in four weeks. Come on, bro. You only lifted an extra 45% more weight on your kettlebell deadlift over the course of 28 days. Are you joking? The first two are hypothetical scenarios. Why on earth would you look back and feel disgusted and ashamed and let down by making that progress? Whether it's adding five kilos to a bench press or losing two kilograms on the scale. Why would you bemoan that? Why would you look back and reflect upon that in a negative manner? You know, I only lost two. Yeah, I was hoping for more. You know what? It's better than fucking zero. It's better than not losing any weight. It's better than losing 0.5, one kilo, 1.5 kilos. So how about you stop being so hard on yourself and actually say, hey, I'm two kilos lighter than I was a month ago. Or if you've been working your bench press really consistently and you managed to increase your PB by a five kilo jump, how about you say, fuck, that's awesome. I added an extra five kilos that I didn't have on my bench press six months ago. And if you're a novice or an intermediate lifter, you might hear that five kg increase on the bench press and think, fuck, that's not a lot. But when you are near your maximal level of strength, we have what is known as the law of diminishing returns. The people who are near their genetic ceiling have less room to move and improve. Okay, take Usain Bolt, for example. I use him often because pretty much everybody in the world knows who he is. As a youngster, he probably had a lot of room for growth. He hadn't built himself into, or he hadn't realized his full genetic potential. He was still growing. He had muscles to build. He had to work on his technique. His skill needed to be improved. His start, he was never a great starter out of the blocks. All of these things. 
And over the years, he refined and improved all of them. He built bigger quads. He got a stronger trunk, you know, learned to, you know, prevent maybe rotating the hips or the arms, whatever it is. He had a lot of opportunity and a lot of time to fine tune his technique and his skill and his physical attributes. So as he went from being an adolescent to an adult, he got extremely good. His improvement went quick, right? When he became a fully mature adult, his ceiling, his room for growth and improvement becomes smaller and smaller because he's still working on his craft. He's still working on his speed and his strength and his power development. He's still working on getting out of the blocks. But what happens is he gets 0.5% better at every one of those things. Or maybe let's call it 1%. He gets 1% better at getting out of the blocks. Arm drive, keeping his head down for the first you know, 10, 20 meters. He's maybe working on being more powerful per foot strike. And then as he gets to that 1% and he squeezes the necessary or the, what's the word I'm chasing? The full volume or orange out of the proverbial orange juice. He squeezes it out of, to its maximum potential. He's got to look at other avenues. All right, I've maximized that. What else can I work on? And maybe he doesn't get 1% better. Maybe he finds an avenue where he can get 0.5% better. But at the end of the day, all of those 1%ers or 0.5%, they add up. And that's what you're chasing. A little bit of progress is better than no progress at all. A little bit of progress is better than no progress at all. Whether you drop one kilo, two kilo, three kilo. Don't compare it against anybody else or you know what that person over there is doing or what the person over there on that machine can lift. Compare your efforts and your results and your progress and your growth to you. If you improved, if you lifted more weight, if you ran faster, if you got lighter, if you got leaner, that's awesome. I congratulate you, truly, because it means that what you're doing is working. And as a result, that gives you proof and knowledge and a sense of satisfaction. Hey, the plan is working. What I'm doing is providing or is achieving a certain result. And that's what we're doing here. We're trying to go from here to there. And whether you make a 10% increase or improvement or 5% or 3% or 2% or a 1%, you're getting closer from your start position to your end goal or outcome. So understand that you're still getting closer to that end point. You're moving forward. Be grateful for that. So those two examples that are provided, you know, adding an extra 5 kg to the bench press or losing 2 kilos of body weight, right? I've plucked them out of thin air. They're just examples. Those last two, those are real life examples from current students in my program. So one of my students, he increased the amount of weight that he did on his double kettlebell front squat by 840 kilos in a one four week program. So over four weeks, he got an extra 840 kilos stronger. One of my other students, she's working on the kettlebell deadlift. And over the course of 28 days, she was able to lift an extra 45% more weight. So all of these things, that's just two examples. But do you know what we do in that situation and in that scenario and in that circumstance? I fucking celebrate it. I tell them how awesome it is. They come in, they follow the program, they hit their numbers, they do the work. And hey, this is your fucking reward that you made that much progress and that much growth in that short amount of time over a four week period over you know one program 28 days you got that much fucking stronger in just one exercise i'm not including the other four or five exercises in the program that's just one progress is progress no matter what shape or form it takes take it enjoy it savor it ask yourself are you better than where you were one week ago, one month ago, three, six, 
12 months ago. Are you in better physical shape? Yes, no, maybe. Take stock of where you are compared to where you were when you started. So if you're on a health and fitness journey, if you want to get strong, if you want to get powerful, if you want to get fit, if you want to get lean, if you want to get strong, look back at when you first started. Do you have any photos? What was your build? Were you skinny? Were you fat? Were you, you know, like this? Were you broad? And then look back at that compared to where you are right now. And I am sure that you will have a lot to be grateful and thankful for. Pat yourself on the back. Hey, you might not be exactly where you want to be yet, but you're further down the fucking path than where you were when you first started. It doesn't mean rest on your laurels. It doesn't mean, hey, you're as far as you can get because I guarantee you can get better. You can continue to improve. So if you are in better in a better position with your health and fitness, you know, stop complaining about being in superior shape. Think about how egotistical that is. You know, when I first started, I was, you know, like myself. I'm going to use myself as an example because it's something I can relate to because I lived it. When I first walked into Zest Health Club as a raw 16-year-old kid, I was skinny. I was weak, I was shy, and I was fucking terrified of lifting weights. That's the truth, because it was a foreign environment to me. I'd not been in the gym before, and especially not on my own. If I'd done it, it was always in a team setting for sport, for football. And then, you know, after the first couple of sessions that were fucking nerve wracking and, you know, painful from a mental standpoint, you know, feeling like people were judging me and looking at me and all the rest of it, Yes, that's right. I went through the same thing as you. <laughs> yes. But after I got over that initial stage fright and, you know, you know, fear factor, I kept at it. And I got a little bit better and I got a little bit more confident and I got a little bit more, you know, strong and developed a little bit of muscle. And then I stuck with it because I saw the small improvements, the small gains, those small markers and milestones of improvement. Hey, this shit's working. Fuck yeah, this is great. Body's starting to change. And because the body's starting to change and because what you can do starts to develop, you know, you can push the cable or you can lift the dumbbell with a bit more effort, a bit more power. Or maybe, you know, when you're doing those lunges at first, fuck, the legs were wobbly and now you're rock solid, you're stable. And hey, maybe you've even got dumbbells in your hand. Maybe you've even got a kettlebell. Fucking props to you, sir or madam. Awesome work. Truly commendable, honestly. Because that right there is giving you validation that what you're doing or what you have done is actually producing the result that you're chasing. You want to get stronger. Awesome. Beautiful. Respectable goal. Love it. Let's do it. Start with the basics. Dominate the basics. Do them consistently. Do them correctly. Do them with intent. And you will find they will go from being shaky, from wobbly to unstable, or from unstable to, okay, I feel stable, I feel secure, I feel strong. Once you've got that down, Pat, then you start to think, hmm, I might have to go up in weight here. Hmm, I might have to do a few extra reps. So then the mindset changes from fear, apprehension, anxiety to challenge, opportunity, growth. If you listen to the last podcast, you'd know that that is a direct correlation and reflection of the two mindsets, a fixed mindset and a growth mindset. But the way we get there is through doing. It's not by reading about it. It's not by scrolling online. It's by getting in the arena. If you want to make progress, you've got to do the thing, whether it's going for a run, whether it's staying on top of your nutrition, drinking the amount of water that's required, whether it's doing your strength training. Understand that you've got to do the thing. And when you do the thing, you start to see results. As you get results, 
that gives you, like I said, validation, factual evidence, proof that, hey, it's working. So keep going. Don't complain about, oh, I only added, I only went from a 12 kilo kettlebell to a 16 kilo kettlebell. So what you're telling me is you are unhappy with getting better. Right. Sounds like we need to perhaps reframe expectations here. Any progress is good progress. Understand that if you go from one kettlebell, from one size kettlebell to the next one up, fantastic. Well done, truly. Better is better. So, you know, could you be further down the line, you know, with more strength, better fitness, less fat, and higher levels of consistency? Maybe, but maybe not. Acknowledge the fact that you're better off than you were 12 months ago, if you are, because that is a good feat in and of itself. Understand that, all right, 12 months ago, if you literally, all right, what's the date today? It's the 24th of January, 2024. Think back to where you were, what shape you were in, what mindset you had, how smart you were on the 24th of January, 2023. Like actually do it as a mental exercise. Where were you one year ago today? Let's play a game. Where were you one year ago? Exactly 365 days in the past. How fit were you? How strong were you? How lean were you? How consistent were you? Did you have a diet plan? Did you have an exercise routine? Were you a couch potato? Were you a gamer? Did you stay up late? Were you an alcoholic? Look back at where you were one year ago compared to now and ask yourself the question, are you better or worse than you were 365 days ago? If you have a growth mindset, if you're somebody who wants to actually develop and improve themselves, the answer will be, Jesse, I am fucking, I, I'm a lot better off now than back then. So if that is you, well done. Reward for effort. Now keep going. But if your answer is, Jesse, I'm in fucking worse shape. My mindset, my mental state is down absolute shitter. Then, all right, we've got some work to do. But don't discard, don't discard and don't discount the fact that, hey, you may be in a better position. Maybe it's a little bit, maybe you're miles ahead. But either way, if you do have progress to show, Acknowledge it. You know, I'm not going to say, you know, pin it up on the wall and say, hey, I did this thing this time ago, go me. And then you live forever off, you know, past successes and, you know, previous triumphs. No, but acknowledge the good when it's there. So that's what I'm saying. Acknowledge the fact that you could be, hopefully, better than you, where you were 12 months ago. Now, in saying that, if you think you could do more, if you think you could step up and take things to the next level and make even more progress, do that now. Don't be that person who waits for the fucking Monday to roll around. You know, as I record this, it's a Wednesday. If you're having a shit week, if you're having a shit start to the year, maybe you've had some bad news. Don't fucking dwell. Don't, you know, waste the rest of the week. Don't waste the rest of the month. How's about tomorrow, Thursday, you fucking put on your big boy pants and you say, we go again. All right? Stop replaying missed opportunities or past failures over and over again in your head. They're gone. The past is the past. Your job, your role, what you can do is concentrate on the here and now, the present. All right. But if you had a shit year, if you are in worse physical condition than this time last year, ask yourself why. Did you lose sight of what's important? Did you just forget 
to work out. And this is how I say that statement and I chuckle to myself. You know, did you just forget to work out? Hey, we all forget shit, myself included. That's why I like to write things down. I, if you've been listening for a while, you'd probably understand and probably heard me talk about that I send myself emails. If there's something that I need to remember or remind myself to do, I don't rely on my memory. I send myself an email. Do this. Follow up with this person. Send you know this student this video or this link or this document. You know, I still remember the day that I fucked up 75 hard. Forgot to do the easiest thing in the world. Take a progress photo. Stand in front of the fucking mirror. Bang. Press a button. I forgot to do it. So how did I fix it? I put a post-it note up on the mirror to remind myself. Took all of fucking five, ten seconds. Get a little bright yellow piece of paper and say, take the fucking photo. Cost me a lot of heartache. You know, it was 10, 12 days that, you know, I wasted on the program. Not wasted, but, you know, I put into the program. And then I had to restart it. So maybe you did forget to work out one time. And that one time of missing a training session led to, oh, fuck, forgot the second time. And oh, fuck, forgot a third time. And then all of a sudden, you forgot entirely that you had a gym membership that you're still paying for, that you're not using. And those 24-7 gyms prey on people like you. Here, buy this membership. It's $9.79. Per week. They would love for you to sign up and never come in and utilize the equipment. They hope you forget. And they won't follow up on you. Because if every single person who had a fucking 24-7 gym membership rocked up, they would be packed to the rafters. They would be fucking overflowing. There would be no equipment. There would be no space. And that's what they prey on, is you forgetting to go and use your gym membership. So if that's you... Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Get yourself back to the fucking gym. You know, if you're in worse physical condition, is it because you had nobody, including yourself, hold you accountable to say, hey, Harold, how's that diet of yours going, man? Hey, have you been to the gym this week? Have you gone for a run? Have you done any rucking lately? Hey, Harold, I haven't seen you post anything on social media at the moment. How are you doing, man? Are you okay? Hey, Harold, I saw you were at a party, man. I saw a couple of photos and I don't know how to put it, man, but you just, you look like you've gained a bit of weight. You know, I say this out of love. I say it because I care, but, you know, have you let yourself go a little bit? You know? And sometimes it does take that hard conversation or that hard reality check or perhaps, I don't know, a, uh, a wake-up call for you to flip that switch and go from, yep, I've been real passive. I've just been living. I've been surviving. I've been reactive, not proactive. Yeah. What I'm trying to get at, guys, is this. Progress is tangible. All right? You should be able to measure it. You should be able to track it. If you haven't been doing it, now's a great time. Progress is tangible. You should be able to touch, see, and feel progress. So I do mean that both figuratively and literally. So can you track and measure your progress? Yes or no? It's quite binary. So ask yourself, have you been doing that? Have you been writing down your gym sessions? Have you been recording your sets and reps and weight lifted? Have you been putting any notes in the bottom of your training program? Tried this, didn't feel good, made the adjustment. That was the winning ticket. You know, just yes or no. Have you been recording things? Want to lose weight? Have you been using a food journal or a food diary, tracking calories? Yes or no? Because here's the thing, and this, this, is, this might hurt your feelings a little bit. You cannot bemoan a lack of progress if you don't record it and monitor it. I don't care if you do it digitally, on your phone, on a computer, or if you do it the old school way, which I like, pen and paper, all right? It doesn't matter how you do it. It just matters that you do it. If you want to make progress, write shit down. Don't rely on your fucking memory because chances are you won't remember jack shit. You know, what did you have for a meal two weeks ago? 
I got fucking no idea. Zero. What did you do for training three Mondays ago? Uh, oh, three Mondays ago. Let me think back. Uh, Monday would have been International Chess Day. So, no. You know, you don't want to have to try and scour through the crevices of your fucking brain, the, the, the small recesses to think, what did I do? What did I eat? What training have I done? What have I not done? What have I forgot? Write it down. So there's two types of progress, all right? You know, we have what's called subjective progress. And this is where a lot of people go wrong. A lot of people use subjective progress. Oh, Jesse, yeah, I, I feel like I'm progressing and I feel like I'm moving in the right direction. Uh, that's a blank statement. What does that actually mean? What does feeling like I'm progressing entail? Can you define what that actually is? What are the metrics? What are the markers? What are the characteristics of feeling like you're progressing? So just yesterday, I got a message on Instagram from a prospective student, and I was touching base with him to see where he's at on his uh, strength and conditioning journey. And his message reads like this. Pre-season well underway. Feeling better for it too. S and C, I'm not sure how to gauge myself, to be honest. I feel fitter and stronger, but I only do what we do at training and then just body weight stuff at home. That is a red flag. That needs to be addressed right now. You know, I feel fitter and stronger. But do you have any statistical evidence to back this up or is it just a feeling? This morning I woke up and I felt tired. Was I actually tired or was it just how I felt? You know, I feel like I'm unfit. Well, when was the last time you did any fitness testing? When was the last time you checked your blood pressure? When was the last time you checked your heart rate? When was the last time you had, you know, your SpO2 taken? You know, I feel tired. That's a subjective response. You know, I don't feel like training. You can still do things when you feel a certain way. I feel like eating an ice cream. Doesn't mean I should do it. Doesn't mean that I should not do it either, but it's a feeling. It's actually not a directive. It's not a representation of what I should do or not do. And it's also not an accurate representation of progress I have or have not made. So what we're chasing is facts over feelings. This is how you do it. This is how you go from having a subjective feeling of, I feel like I'm getting fitter and stronger. Ask yourself these questions. Are you lifting more weight? Yes or no? Are you running further or faster? Yes or no? Are you lighter or heavier? So yeah, I'm asking you know about your weight. Oh, heaven forbid. Uh, step on the scale. What does it say? Write that number down. Are you lighter or are you heavier? Is your beat test or the yo-yo test improving? Write it down. Do it. As uncomfortable as that may be to do the dreaded yo-yo test. Do -do 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 -do. Write it down. Get a starting point. So if you're unfamiliar with the beat test, it is a 20 meter intermittent uh, fitness test. Uh, it's often used by sporting teams, also for uh, police recruitment to assess somebody's cardiovascular fitness. And you can do your own research if you're interested to know more about it, uh, but it's brutal. Basically, you've got a 20 meter shuttle and there's an audio recording that goes with it. And it starts off very, very slow. So it's like at a really far, you know, I call it like a medium, like fast walk or like a really slow jog. And basically you have X amount of seconds to get between the first cone and the second cone. So it beeps, and you run to the next cone, you turn around. It beeps, you run back to the next cone and it does that. And it progressively gets faster and 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 faster. And, faster. and it's just absolutely the best. It's just the best experience you, you, you'll ever have in your life. Anybody who's done the, the beep test, uh, hit me up. I'd love to know your score and I'd also love to know how you felt afterwards. Anyway, the yo-yo test is a little bit different. This is more 
uh, what's the word? It's more accurate and more fitting for intermittent sports where it's not continual. So, you know, it's stop start. Okay, so the beep test, especially when you get to higher speeds, that you have basically no rest. You are literally going back and forth between that 20 meter fucking cone uh, with zero rest. It's basically you're maxing out your speed and then you eventually have to stop because you can't make the time. You can't make the beep. The yo-yo test is the same in the fact that there's 20 meters, but there is a five meter recovery. So you'll go from one cone to another. So you beep, you run up to the first cone. Beep, you run back. Then you do a five meter recovery at the end and you have, I think it's 10 seconds before the next beep and you go again. So it's a little bit more applicable for sports where it's intermittent, rugby, football, uh, AFL, etc. So anyway, long story short, my football club, uh, we've been doing the yo-yo test as our marker for fitness. On the 7th of December, 2023, uh, I recorded a level 16.8, on the yo-yo test, which means that I ran 1,400 meters, I scored average, and my estimated VO2 max was 48.2. We retested the yo-yo test on uh, January, bear with me, I have the wrong date written down here. We retested, oh, we retested on the 11th of January, 11th of January, 2024. My score, I got level 18.4, which is a distance of 1,880 meters, a score of good, and an estimated VO2 max of 52.8. So I improved by 8.2% over that five week period. That is data. Those are numbers to verify, hey, you went from X to Y. I can hang my hat on that and say that what I'm doing is working. It's proof. It's not a feeling. It's not subjective. It is a fact. Progress is being made and I've got the numbers to back that up. So what I'm trying to get at, guys, is chase improvements in any way you can. If you have a weight loss goal, I would highly encourage you to track it and put it on a weight uh, on an app or on a graph to see the trend line. So if you weigh yourself daily, weekly, every four weeks, put it on a graph so you can see the trend line. Is it going up? Is it going down? Is it going sideways and not really making much of a progression either way? Okay, if you're doing a 5K run, record your run time and see if you can beat your previous PB. But understand, again, that law of diminishing returns. If you set yourself a new PB, don't expect to beat it every fucking week. Look back at what you did six months, 12 months ago, and review your time. Okay, the faster and the fitter and the more efficient you become, the harder it is to keep pushing that needle forward. I used Usain Bolt as the example. Are you Usain Bolt? Are you at elite Olympic level? Probably not. If you are, thank you for tuning into the wake up call. I appreciate your listening in. But otherwise, understand okay, you can probably do a lot of things to improve your runtime. Maybe it's getting leaner. Maybe it's technical work in terms of actual run skill, like because running is a skill. Maybe it's getting stronger so that you can put more force into the ground every time your foot touches the ground. If you want to get, if you want to improve your work capacity, look at density training. Can you complete more work in less time? Try it and find out. So maybe it's a circuit of three exercises and you've got, you've got to lift this amount of weight for this amount of reps and you've got to do five minutes worth. How many rounds do you do? And then that's something, again, you can replicate in three, six, 12 months time and say, hey, this is what I got the first time. This is what I got the second time. This is what I got the third time. So just super recently, I had a new student complete a 4K time trail on the airmill bike. So the airmill bike, it's a fan propelled bike. It's got arm levers and 
pedals just like a normal bicycle it is the best thing out there uh high reward low impact so maybe you've used an airmill bike or something similar maybe it's the rogue echo bike this thing is fucking brutal everybody has a love-hate relationship with it you know the faster you go the harder it gets all right but the slower you go the the longer the pain and the discomfort goes on for so it's kind of like a catch-22 but she she hated it my my student she fucking loathed it she wanted to get off multiple times she's like i can't keep going i was like keep going push keep going put a towel over the screen so she's like don't worry about the numbers just fucking pedal just pedal and push pull the levers push pull cycle push pull cycle hated it but in under 10 minutes she was done and now we have baseline data to compare in the future so you got to track measure and then adjust accordingly that's the key part that right there my friend is the key part if you want to make progress track it measure it and then adjust adjusting is the last part if you haven't been tracking start there if you haven't been measuring what you're doing whether it's quantitative kilos lifted reps performed you know how much food you've been eating how many calories you're consuming start there get some data get some numbers on the board on the paper and then adjust so if you're making positive you know forwards progress awesome if you're making negative progress you're going backwards uh that's how you determine whether you a keep doing what you're doing b you change what you're doing c you give it more time maybe it's like you know a cake you just need to leave it in the oven for another five minutes five days five weeks whatever it is that you're doing i'm not saying leave a cake in the oven for five fucking weeks don't be ridiculous uh or maybe it's be more consistent so if you have habits and routines that you're tracking on a habit tracker uh what's your consistency level oh jesse i'm doing it really well show me your habit tracker here it is here here have a look 63 percent. yeah we're not changing a fucking thing until you get that number higher than 80 percent. so not everything needs to be changed you don't have to be, you know, out with the fucking bathwater. It doesn't have to be fresh water, fresh approach, fresh program, fresh diet. Sometimes you've just got to fucking do the work and be more consistent and give it more time. But you won't know that unless you track it and measure it. <laughs> so you've got to do that shit to make sure the plan is being followed as intended. Training program data. This is simple shit, guys. This is fucking, you know, this is grade fucking one. Grade one, write down your sets, your reps. How much weight are you lifting? What was the technique like? Did some, was there a technical part of the movement that broke down? Bench press, oh, I lost my shoulder weight positioning on rep four. Okay, all right, maybe there's a note, need to squeeze the bar harder. On lunges, maybe it's, I need to slow down. Give yourself some fucking feedback and information so that next week or the next time you go back to train, you know what to do. So it's not gonna take you another three to four sets to find out what you already fucking know. You know, if, if you make the same mistake every fucking week on the same exercise, you have one person to blame, your fucking self, all right? If every time you do a lunge, you lose your balance because you're too toey, so your heel comes off the ground or whatever the fucking reason is, and you realize by set three or four, oh, that's right, I've got to keep my heel on the ground. I've got to put a bit more weight through the back of my shoe. If you make that same fault and that same error and that same floor every single week that's on you and you can fix it really simply if you just write down in a little fucking square in your program or in your note section on your phone or whatever you fucking use heel pressure keep heel on the floor or whatever language that you like uh you, by the time you hit week four your technique's going to be fucking clean you're probably going to be able to do more and it's going to be way more stable so Again, track, measure, write down, give yourself some fucking information. If you don't have information, you're not going to make good decisions, are you? If you don't make good decisions, you're not going to get good fucking results, good outcomes. So if you want to get better, know where you are right now and then record and write everything down. Be meticulous. If it's important, write it down. Don't rely on your memory. Don't, you know think that your crusty brain is going to be like a steel trap and remember everything 
just like fucking Sherlock Holmes and his mind palace, that shit gets full. And once it's full, you're going to need to delete some information because it's just going to fucking overflow. So for, you know, those Sherlock Holmes fans, Benedict Cumberbatch, great series. But he talks about the mind palace. It's like he's got to fucking sift through all of these files and, you know, filing cabinets to find that one piece of information he's looking for. Or you just fucking write it down. And you can quickly locate it and bang. You make better progress quicker with less mental anxiety, stress, and strain. If you do that and the numbers move in your favor, please celebrate those successes and that forward momentum. That's progress. Well done. Give yourself a pat on the back and then do it again. Give yourself that pat on the back and repeat it. Don't let it be a fluke. Don't let it be a once in a lifetime occurrence. Prove to yourself that you can, in fact, do it again. It may not be to the same degree. Maybe over a four week period, you improve by 5%. And then in a week, uh, and then month two, you improve by 2.5%. You know what? I don't call that a loss. I don't call that doing worse. I call that seven and a half percent worth of prog progress over two months. That's fucking excellent. Track it, measure it, compare it however you want percentages, kilos lifted, you know, but have some actual numbers and data to, to look back on. And acknowledge when you are on top and use that to inspire more action because that'll create more results and more evidence to keep that flywheel turning actions, results, then motivation in that order. That's the fucking one, two, three process. We do something, we get an outcome, we celebrate it, and we want to do it again because it made us feel good. Make sense? Wicked. So guys, to uh, wrap this up and put a nice little bow on it for you, any progress is good progress. 1%, 2%, 3%, or like I said, an 8.2% in my case, improvement is positive. Take what you can get. And if you want more, do more. Be more meticulous in your tracking and measuring and work for that shit. It's not going to just fall in your lap. You know, you're not going to go and find, you know, that fucking success fairy and, you know, ask them, hey, need a little bit of love, need a little bit of success. Can you sprinkle some fucking pixie dust on me and, you know, point me in the right direction. Give me a, give me a win. I really need it. No. How about you stay in the real world, track, measure, and then adjust in that order. So guys, acknowledge when you are doing well and call yourself out if you're not doing the right things or if you have had a bit of a backward slide and you need a bit of a kick up the ass or a wake up call because we all need them from time to time. But please do acknowledge when you do something well, awesome. Give yourself a thumb up, give yourself a gold star, Spread the message, share a win on the fucking social medias. Hey, I started this thing and I'm doing really well. Just wanted to share it. Hey, nothing's stopping you from doing that. And do you know what? The people who celebrate, you know, your success, those are the people you want to hang around. You know, you don't want yes men, but at the same time, you also want people in your corner who, you know, do give you that little bit of a, you know, arm around the fucking shoulder. Say, hey, man, that's awesome. Well done. But then on the flip side, when maybe you don't check in with yourself or maybe you don't check in with them, they check in on you and say, hey, what's going on? Do we need to, you know, have a little powwow? Do we need to have a coffee and, you know, get back on track here? Guys, that's progress. Enough is enough. Me talking about it. It's time for you to go and live it, do it, breathe it, and then show it, record it. It's so good to be able to say, hey, this is where I was 12 months ago. And think about this, if you take this shit seriously, and I do mean take it to heart, think about where you are right now. Reconsider what goal you have right now. And then ask yourself, where do you want to be in 12 months time? I'm not talking hypotheticals. I'm talking real life. 12 months, one year from now, where the fuck do you want to be? Do you want to be in the same spot or do you want to be in a better spot? Answer that question 
and then do what you need to do. Track, measure, hold yourself to account. That's what you got to do. That's how progress is made. You know what to do, guys. Go and get after it. And also, if you did benefit from this podcast, pay the fee. You know, I give out these nuggets of information and hopefully a bit of wisdom that you can actually utilize in your life. I do it for free and I do it because I enjoy it. But if you benefited from it and you think somebody else could benefit from it too, please share it forward. Facebook, Instagram, email a friend, text message them the link. Say, click this, listen to it on your drive home or on the drive to work. Because you benefited from it, chances are somebody else will too. So that's my ask. I'm going to leave it there and you guys can get on with your day or night. Much love, guys. I'll speak to you soon for another episode. If you loved the Wake Up Call, found it entertaining, or got some benefit out of listening, I would appreciate you helping me to spread the word. Please share it with a friend or on social media so that you can pay it forward and give someone else the opportunity to improve themselves like you just have. Thanks for listening. We'll see you soon for another episode.